Hello everyone and welcome to the final whistle. We are not in the studio today, been really busy, but the show goes on. We need to put out the match reaction, Man United 1, Brighton 3. I actually can't even believe I'm saying that. Well, it's not that I can't believe I'm saying that, it's just that the, the result, okay, we knew it was going to be a tough game against Brighton and you know any of the top six besides City could potentially lose against Brighton but it's the performance the performance is really a, a issue and um, you know I was watching a, a show on the United stand um, I think Beth spoke about it on there and she said that if you compare if you compare if you compare the the fixtures that we already played to those fixtures from last season we are actually only two points behind and i know that is now really um looking for a positive out of the situation but that's what we have to do um we are unfortunately in this situation we thought we would be two points or three points better off than last season but we are slightly worse off than last season in terms of points but there's still a lot of games to go I believe we can still find some positivity and go on a good run of games. Um, we do have Bayern Munich in the Champions League this week, so <laughs> I don't think we're getting anything there. But you never know. It's It would be just so like football for Manchester United to lose against Brighton and then to go and win against Bayern Munich. But I'm not saying it would happen, but... It wouldn't really surprise me. So, fingers crossed that we do win against them or just get a point at least. Um, but, yeah, on to the, the, the game against Brighton. Um, you know, a lot of people were criticizing Rashford. They were criticizing Ten Hag. Firstly, I don't want to hear any criticism towards Ten Hag. I think that is ridiculous. Um, well, it's, it's not ridiculous. Anyone is or can get criticized. Um, but Ten Hag is not the issue at Man United. The issue runs deeper. Um, I'm not sure if you all remember. I'm sure you do. Ralph Rangnick said that, you know, it's not a cosmetic surgery. It's open heart. And what that means is it's not just buying players here and there. The club's structure internally needs to be altered. And a lot, I know Ralph Rangnick didn't have the best of times at Man United, but... Um, he does know football. He does know how to structure a club. And we just took that with a, not with a grain of salt, but we didn't really dive deep into that comments that he made. It was just like, oh, yes, we know big changes. We just thought big changes, big changes. But he was actually saying that internally, the club needs to change as well. Um, and that starts with the Glazers, unfortunately. The club has been running into a absolute state multiple complaints about Old Trafford um, and that trickles down to the players um, players are critis um, fans were criticizing Rashford um, I spoke to Ashley in the beginning of the season before the season started um, everyone was raving about Rashford and I said you know Rashford is great and all but um, he he needs to work on his gameplay I told Ashley that if Rashford doesn't score he generally has a poor game. And even when he does score, he has a poor game. So, yes, he needs to work on his game. But he is also not the issue. Casemiro looks leggy. You know, you we would have excused him generally for a game here, a game there. You know, start of the season. But, um, yeah, it's now into game five. He's still looking leggy. And that's concerning. Amrabat, hopefully, is going to help him out. But if Casemiro doesn't come right, we would need another centre mid. Um, I mean, Brighton is a great team, great footballing team, but so should Man United be. Um, it's 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 ridiculous that we have fallen so far from the top that we have to compare ourselves footballing wise to. Brighton and and strive to be a team like Brighton. Brighton should be striving to be a team like Man United. Um, but yeah, it's it's just 
It's just unfortunate we find ourselves in this position. I think that moving forward, big changes need to be made. Oh, there's people in the back. Big changes need to be made. Um, and yeah, Mount needs to be brought back in the team. You know, the first couple of games, Mount was basically a scapegoat. And now we see that he is not the issue. The issue is not Mount. So we will welcome him back in the team. Um, also, we're looking forward to, let's see who else, Kobe Mainu. Kobe Mainu is going to be a, a huge player for Man United. He had a great preseason. Um, hopefully he can bring that energy, um, a bit of spark to the midfield. Um, we have Shaw, we have Varane, we have a, a huge injury list. So hopefully once those players come back, we will really kick on and start winning games. Um, yeah, when it comes to Eric Ten Hag, Eric Ten Hag, it's his second season. He will make mistakes. No one pictured that Eric Ten Hag's time at Man United would just be go from strength to strength to strength to strength. I mean, Arteta finished, I think it was eighth, and then another season eighth before he got something out of Arsenal. I think it's it's eighth way. I'm not sure where I heard that stat, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Klopp, Klopp also didn't just hit the ground running with Liverpool. Um, and when um, Eric Ten Hag took over Man United, <laughs> I would generally say that the club was a, not player for player worse, but definitely internally um, we were worse than, than those two teams. Um, so, yeah, I just hope that the team starts clicking. We have bright spells against teams, you know, against Tottenham. We played well for 20 or 30 minutes against Brighton. We started off great. I was thinking, oh, my word, this is going to be such a good game. It looks like we are stringing passes, but then we fall flat and... One thing I'm starting to notice about this Manchester United team, um, especially now this season, when we go a goal down, we are very nervous as fans. And I think the team is also nervous. Well, we can sense the team is nervous. It doesn't seem like, okay, we're going a goal down and no, we're definitely going to win this game. Um, yeah, when we go a goal down, it's like, oh shit, I hope they don't score again against us. Um, and yeah... It's, I really don't know why. It's, it's, that's a mentality issue. It's a mentality issue. It's an issue of being driven, believing in, in yourself, believing in the team as a whole. Um, and that's a, that comes from a group of players. Um, you don't need someone to tell you to believe and, and, and make you believe. You should have that mentality as an individual. If you are a top, top player and you want to win things, you should have that mentality to win. Um, and I think that is, well, Casemiro, Varane, those are two, Varane is out. But there's so many other players that need to come to the table with that mentality. Um, so, yeah, it's we really need to work on, on big things at, at United. Um, but I do believe Ten Hag is the right man. Don't question Ten Hag. Well, not don't question him. Don't put him as the target person to say why Manchester United is not doing great. Um, Ten Hag had a great season. It's been five games. And yes, it's not been a good opening five games, but we can't go from his done medicals to easy the right man based off five games. So yeah, let's just hope that we kick on from this disappointing result. By Munich Uplex, we'll have a match preview for that as well. Um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.